Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeVries, and this is our weekly show where we break down the latest in television news and talk about the week that was in TV. Joining me today, we got a full house. First <laughs> up, it's Josh McCuga. What's up, Sinead? And what's up, Collider fans? Welcome to another edition of The Greatest Show, talking about TV and the history of the internet. <laughs> I'm your host, Josh McCuga. We got a lot of topics today, mostly talking about <clears throat> The Walking Dead finale, I, we're just, still a little, a little hurt by it, guys. We don't know what to talk about. Uh, who's next, Nate? Who else is on here with me? Well, gracing us with his presence today is Dennis Zen. Yeah. Oh, well, that wasn't oh, me. Dennis oh, Dennis looks oh, amazing. I look, I look Dennis great, yeah. looks so good. You guys, he got a bleach job and everything. <laughs> That's the second time in a week that I turned white. So. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you guys watched the first uh, uh, last April Friday's Fools episode, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I couldn't stay away. I wanted to talk TV. Great to have you back, man. Also here again, it's Sasha Pearl Raver. I couldn't stay away either because you guys, I need I need support. I need a community <laughs> right now. I was super upset and I don't know that I'm like in a place really to be with people who don't understand my pain. <laughs> <laughs> and David Griffin. So much positive energy for the Walking Dead season <laughs> six finale. There's so much, it's just radiating off the panelists today. It's gonna be a fun show. All right, well, let's get into it, you guys. The season six finale of The Walking Dead aired last night to very mixed reactions. Fans were finally treated to Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Negan, but left with a salty cliffhanger. Fans assaulted, as they're known to do, the social media world bashed the finale for its lack of payoff after an entire season leading up to this point. Josh, do you think The Walking Dead failed their fans with the season six finale? Yeah, I don't, you have to, the way that the internet exploded, and the way that we, the, right after the episode, if you guys watch the Collider Walking Dead recap show, right after the episode, I was like, guys, this is television. This is how spoilers work. This is like what they do. They, they toy us. And then everybody was like, but dude, we, we could have seen certain things and it still would have worked way better than how they ended it. I think what I'm most offended by, if we're going to talk about like our feelings in general, I'm most offended by that, that we're, I feel taken advantage of. Like they know they have the numbers, they know they have the, the the viewing audience, they know that people are tuned in for this. They we've been waiting. They gave us a ninety minute finale with like a thousand commercials, and it still it just it left a really salty taste in your mouth. Not only that, but it's kind of like fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Is that like are they do the writers sit around and go like ah, we don't know who we want to kill you. I don't know where the contracts are, so. Well, interesting, because I was thinking about you as soon as I saw this, because you were upset that Negan was held back for as long as yeah. he was, and then we get him, and then they did what they did. Here's my thought. We live in a streaming society, in an instant gratification so society. Like, we're used to being able to watch all 13 episodes and have questions answered immediately. I feel like they turned off a lot of fans, and I do think that they did it 100% intentionally. If you go to my Twitter, I tweeted out a video of Negan saying, it sucks, doesn't it? Not knowing what I don't know if I can curse but he says a bad word and I'm like oh so the writers were saying you're not going to know anything we're totally playing cat and mouse with you we're going to cliffhanger you the way Dallas did with who shot JR except that was in 1980 <laughs> whatever you can't do that anymore I said that last night on Collider on did The you? Walking Dead yes what's I, up my they man like, they don't do this and like you can't do this and I was like guys they've done this with who shot JR on Dallas yeah, but that which was by 30 the way years ago. Say, but you were much more ago. accepting of this finale yes, last but night as than, I know than and I'm not today. backtracking what I'm saying is last night I was definitely a little more accepting of it because it was fresh and then as you guys started talking to me and now I start a little backpedaling then I sat up in my bed and I started thinking about famous finales and famous cliffhangers and I'm like nothing has ever been as short changed as what we got last night as compared to the amount of like the the audience that watched that a show a full season of build up a full season yeah, of teasing Negan Negan casting the Negan crew Negan everywhere you go the Negan da, 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 da. we finally get Negan Jeffrey Dean Morgan legit acting chops he's the best he's fantastic and everybody's saying like we're heading into a war and we're gonna see him as like the general of this war i'm interested in that but come on and all man. we got was sound effects mm. well i mean it was strange for me because I, I i'm a person who has reviewed the walking dead before and been critical of it despite liking it and every time i say anything negative about it people just jump on me jump mm -hmm. on me i talk like the whole Glenn thing that happened earlier this season i was very upset about because i thought it was poor storytelling yeah. and they were just pulling cheap tricks and I guess this is the straw that broke the camel's back because after last night's episode I thought after we did our review that people would be like oh screw you guys screw you Dennis 
But no, people were going harsher than I was. Yeah. They were going mm -hmm. nuts. They were like, screw this show. I'm not coming back. So I was a little surprised. The man with the golden beard. The whole beard. Oh, man. Uh, it's tough. I think Sasha nailed it. I mean, you have this day and age and the instant gratification with streaming and everything. You get results. You look at shows that are based off books like Game of Thrones, Outlander. They end when somebody dies. You see them, you know, die or, or not die. You know, you're not usually left waiting for more. Even this whole controversy with Game of Thrones going into this season, we at least saw what happened in the finale last year. You know, we saw what happened. So I don't like that they're hiding things. If you want to know what happens, read issue 100 of The Walking Dead that just kind of was a 2012 that came out, uh, delivered. It showed you what happened in that scene that we're all talking about from The Walking Dead. You saw who was hit over the head and they move on from there. You don't wait for another issue ends and you said, oh, the next issue will be in six months. So, you know, good luck with that. I don't like that. It is annoying. And I think they're just, like you said, they're dependent on the fans. They know they have the audience. Like They this, know they have it. Th this season when Glenn falls off the, the trash dumpster and we then wait three and a half episodes because we had a 90 minute standalone of Morgan's origin story because everybody <laughs> was begging for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, when did he learn how to use the stick Whoa. so well? Oh, oh that's that's amazing. Amazing. This is the first time they, they've done this. I mean, remember, obviously you've mentioned these other examples. Remember, it was a couple weeks ago. I won't say who because everybody's still trying to catch up. Someone was shot. And there was a line at the very end when the screen goes black, like, you'll be all right. Or something. That was added. That was post. Yeah. They did that because of the outrage of the whole Glenn fiasco. That's yeah. the, it's just you can't. They're dragging us along because they said a couple years ago, AMC people said they want this show to go on as long as possible. There's no end game. Mm -hmm. Other shows have end games. You know, Outlander's based off books. Viking, or, uh, Game of Thrones is based off books. They have end games. They have stories to follow. This is just going to keep going and going. If I could compare it to another television show, do you remember the episode in Seinfeld when George won't answer the answering machine when the girl keeps trying to break up with them? That's what I feel like Walking Dead is doing to us. Like all the fans are like, hey, don't do this again. Yeah. And they're like, sorry, I'm not home right now. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not. <laughs> Here's the question, though. Will they actually lose fans or will people say, like, I'm done, I'm done, and then they're going to we'll, come back? We'll see. And yeah. here's the other thing. I think that they don't know who they killed off. I think it's probably going to be a tertiary character. I think it's going to be somebody secondary. I don't think it's going to be mm. somebody who we've come to love. I think that they might not follow the comics. I could, I'm could. i completely speculating. I agree with you on but that. But I, I think, think they that they're follow. probably going to – I think – the worst thing that they could do is actually not give us a big payoff. Like if they kill off some random schmo, mm. not like Christian, but you know, like <laughs> if they kill somebody who we don't really care about, like I kind of almost want them to kill Daryl. So at least I can be like, well, thanks for giving me at least something yeah. that was worth waiting for. It might be heartbreaking, for. but it was. Is it worth the wait? That's yeah. the question. I don't think that they are going to kill off a random person because of the way the cast reacted when they read the final script. Because I feel like they have to know who was hit over the head because who reacts the way that they said they reacted i mean like we heard people who are afraid to lose their jobs react that way <laughs> people who think oh i don't know yeah, getting but what, what you were saying before about yeah, like so and so like, throwing up yeah. absolutely Lauren like Cohen there were members up. of the cast one of them said they sat up all night rereading the script over and over another one said they immediately threw the script across the room and tried to get in touch with mm -hmm. the producers of the show like so someone explain this to me please and then another one said they threw up now all i kept thinking was what what the hell did you throw up from the only person that should have thrown up was the camera lens because it had <laughs> blood all over and it. not even that great of blood yeah no, it was and honestly CGI aside blood. from the cliffhanger like aside from netflix being what we're used to or we're used to getting answers aside from all of that i think the entire episode could have been done better i think negan could have been introduced halfway through yeah not mm. with 10 minutes left because i watched it today without commercials again and it was like an hour and two minutes mm -hmm. so i'm like okay an hour and two minutes goes to an hour and a half with commercial breaks fine but it's only an hour and two minutes so why not introduce him like 30 minutes before the end because right. he was the best part of the episode and at least that might have made it a little less of a blow had, to us if we got so much more of that acting because what else did we get from the episode? We, mm -hmm. we just basically had dinner salads for 50 minutes exactly. and then they brought the entree and it was cold. It almost yeah. got exciting at one point and then it yeah. kind it of resolved itself. Weirdly like a Pepe Le Pew cartoon, like they're following us and they're gonna catch us and they're yeah. right behind and you're never really getting away. And it was so frustrating because we know that they can do incredible storytelling. And going back to what happened with Glenn, I think they didn't learn from their mistake with no, that. No, well, they got emboldened because people watched it and people mm -hmm. were talking about it. And so, oh, let's, let's pull this. And you know, David has done reviews with me before and I've said, 
this isn't the first time. Not even the Glenn stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember the whole Carl thing with with oh. uh, with Rick, where they they try to in a certain episode they try to make it look like Rick had turned into a zombie. And it was yeah. so cheesy, <laughs> and so that's how I feel like they got they they got uh, like good feedback from that stuff. So they kept doing it and doing it. I think this is the time where they thought they were gonna do it and people were gonna react. Uh, positively to it, and they, they just and they, yeah. yeah, no way. Let's, yeah. Let's do just a couple positives. So I know we're talking. I know obviously the show. There, there, there's issues. Jeffrey Dean Morgan though was fantastic oh, yeah. while yes. he was yes. on screen. Totally. Yes, he was great. We I all mean, agree on that. I, yeah, yeah I, I can't awesome. wait for that. Also, too, gotta give a shout out if you've ever played Grand Theft Auto Five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the I act you have, you, you know it. Trevor. The yes. crazy guy, kind of hillbilly guy. Yes. He's the one who's going around. He's got kind of like, I guess, the main henchman, yeah. basically. And the guy he was with the big he, forehead. He was yeah. fantastic. I believe he's a Canadian actor. He's a fantastic <laughs> actor. He well, was he, great. He was great. He was great. He was great. We'd never seen him before. And I kept comparing him to Captain Lance in Arrow. Yeah, he does uh, a little, he little, little yeah. bit like Captain Lance. And then everybody was like, not for nothing, but he's Grand Theft Auto V. I was like, all right, great. But wherever he's from, he's awesome. I don't yeah. like, I, I'm not like <laughs> insulting him by saying he's one or the other. I will say that, yes, it, it was that. What I want to know from the group is, I'm, I'm sure you're going to tune in, but if they do this again, are you out? It's it's not a show that I don't know. I guess I maybe I, I just I don't I'm not expecting much from the show anymore because they're dragging up because they have no end game in sight. So I'm just they're just trying to create story as they go. I actually wish they follow the comics a little more closely. Mm -hmm. I think you know and follow the way they do that. I think Kirkman's done a great job over over 130 plus issues of the series. And I think they need to follow him more, but I don't know. I'm just not that excited anymore. So, I mean, I'm going to tune in, but I'm not excited for it like I am for Game of Thrones. It's going to start up here in three weeks. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Go. Sinead. I stopped watching The Walking Dead after season three mm -hmm. because uh -huh. I already started feeling like I was being dragged along. Mm -hmm. My dad moved out to California and was still recording all the episodes, <laughs> and I only got back into it at the, at the end of of last season, okay. that second half of season five. And the first thing I said after the first episode we watched was like, oh, well, looks like nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. And it's even worse now. Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, if we didn't talk about this every Monday, I, I don't know if I would watch the show. Interesting. Interesting. I dropped Sasha. out too for a little while. I dropped out after season two and stayed out for most of season three and I came back in on season four. Uh, similarly, because I had a friend who wanted to watch it and I like watching things in community because at least you can talk about them, which is what's so great about this show. Uh, but I've also felt really dragged on. I love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I will watch for him. Um, but again, if we weren't gonna talk about it or if I didn't have friends who were like, come over and let's watch and let's talk, it, it's not something I would tune into on my own. You almost feel obligated to watch it. It's almost like this huge cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Right. Like you, if you don't watch it, then you're out of the conversation. Exactly. Well, I was out of the conversation for Mad Men and I'm okay with that. Cause at some you point I'm gonna be. watch all of it and it's gonna be awesome. But I feel like that will be an enriching experience. And I don't feel like if somebody like me had not watched up to this point of The Walking Dead, or let's say whenever it goes off the air, and then sat down and binge the whole series, like I know when I get to the end of Mad Men, I'm gonna be like, that was amazing. And, the, and, and if somebody like, yeah. got to the end of The Walking Dead, I think they'd be right. like, what? what? Or Dang. at least if they got to the end of this. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it's tough to say because would I still be watching if it wasn't part of my job? Yeah. I, I don't know. I think season four was the one for me that really taste, tested my patience where yeah. I was like, my God, nothing's happening, <laughs> you know? And then, you know, what they do is they always like string you along with two or three, nothing happens. And then they'll have one really good episode. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have three or four that are, nothing happens. So... I don't know. I, I'm definitely going to tune in just to see how they play this out and see the fan reaction. I'm more interested in seeing what the fans have to say when it comes when back. When it comes back. I think, listen, it's a slow television show, I, and everybody said it. They've stretched it out before we even started. Like, we compared it to Silly Putty, yeah. right, Josh? And then it, Josh, <laughs> and it's Josh. Right? So, yes, we know we're getting that. And we don't see an end in sight, and there's obviously so many comic books, and they could, they could go so many different directions. There are slow television shows out there that have worked. The Wire is a kind of a slow television show that is genius. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? It is genius TV. If they were to take a note from that book and you could separate each season, like, okay, season one of The Walking Dead, it's introduction. Then they're on that stupid farm. If you could be like, oh, the farm season, there was this much. Oh, and the payoff was the girl was a zombie. Yeah, no shit, she was a zombie. She got lost in the friggin' woods. Okay. <laughs> then you had the jail. The jail could have been, you could, you could keep finding these independent seasons and they could make them standalone movies. What they didn't do was just that, is they kept dragging us along and dragging us along to the point where the Terminus season, half the crew just had standalone episodes. Beth and Daryl episode was... We got a country club. People were drunk and rich and became zombies. I actually liked that episode, but... I don't know. I just I feel like there's a way to do slow television, and they, they've wronged us here. 
No argument. Sinead's what's next? Well said. <laughs> I was very, I was really hooked onto that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. On April 10th, both Showtime and Stars will be entering the binge market when Showtime releases all six episodes of Dice, the comeback story within a story of Andrew Dice Clay, and when Stars releases all 13 episodes of Steven Soderbergh's The Girlfriend Experience. Other networks like TBS have tried to do the same with their comedy Angie Tribeca, but this is a first for a pay channel like Showtime or Stars. Sasha, can you see major networks and more channels like? HBO making such moves. Absolutely. I think that this is going to have to become the business model. It's exactly what we're talking about with The Walking Dead not giving us any sort of resolution. We've come to expect I want to binge or I want to have appointment TV. People like having that option. The ability to stay home for an entire Saturday and Sunday and see a whole season of something or make an appointment with a friend, sit down, watch some episodes or be part of the water cooler, watch it on Tuesday, watch it on Sunday, whatever, and then be part of like whatever happens on Twitter. I think it's a very intelligent marketing strategy. I personally cannot wait to watch either of these shows and the fact that I can see all of it is great. It also shows whether or not something's working. A lot of shows right now have the problem of creating pay or play contracts where you have shows that are extremely expensive and you get people in big name stars by giving them pay or play contracts so they can come back for a second season and if the show isn't successful they'll still pay you a lot of money. Vinyl is an example of that. A show that I do not think would have been renewed except they have a pay or play contract so they're going to spend millions of dollars anyway just to like keep people on retainer. Let's just pay them the money and get a season. This way people can see what's good, what's working. Are people watching all 10 episodes at once? Are people watching three episodes and dropping out? I think it's really smart. And I, for one, can't wait to binge both of them. Sasha Pro Ray or Dave, what do you think? I think this is a great model too. Uh, there's a couple, I think this would be great for networks, especially like, you know, the big networks, NBC, ABC, Fox. Cause you know, during the pilot season, you hear about all these pilots being developed and created and half of them you never even see. They spend all these millions of dollars casting, shooting. You never, they never see the light of day. I know with, uh, there's a series called The Lock and Key that was gonna be on Fox. It's fantastic, like supernatural story written by Joe Hill, who's Stephen King's son. Never got to see the light of day. I saw the pilot, they aired it at Comic-Con, surprising, in a very small room. Uh, Joe Hill showed up. I would, I think if they could have put that on just dumped it, you know, ended up shooting the episodes. I think it'd be better testing ground for the networks totally. to see what works and what doesn't work. So there's a couple of experimental shows. I know sci-fi is always risky for the big networks. You know, throw Firefly, the original Firefly like that on there, the way it was meant to be aired and let people binge it, see what the fan reaction is. Then maybe it gets a season on rig. So I think it's would be a great testing ground for that. What, what I think what they're missing out a lot on too is that a lot of these shows that like you said, pilot season or get canceled after one or two episodes. There's so much stuff in the can. They can make that available for a binge and get something like happens with Family Guy, right? Mm -hmm. Family Guy goes off the air after two seasons, the DVD culture of it, or three seasons, sorry. The DVD culture of it all made it a cult following, brought it back, and now it's going into season 14 or 15 or however many seasons it's on. Um, you, you could have like a rewards program too where if you – if you watch all the episodes of Game of Thrones, you're rewarded with a binge episode of something. Oh, Do you know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah. I want that. It makes like a video so game. Bad. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. like a stamp card. You yeah. like, you watched all 12. Now you get this. That and, would be so cool. And everybody has like an on-demand feature. So if you get like Fox mm. Go, like what am I tuning in to Fox's app for? I can see everything I want on other, like my Fox on demand or something. But if Fox on Go had, look, here's our list of pilot seasons. Maybe we vote on things that we That's like. That's what Amazon or, does. That's what Amazon yeah. does. Yeah, Amazon does that. And you can, and you could take some of these pilots that maybe they shot four episodes, they didn't release them all, and you're like, oh, go watch it. And they could track some some metrics and watch like, oh, like six million people tuned in to Lock and Key mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Then we have, as viewers, we have a chance to to keep these shows around that maybe would have never gotten a chance because the Nielsen box, which is totally outdated so and doesn't work and is, it has absolutely no place in it, we could get the the ability to see these shows and keep these people going pay or play yes makes sense but it also some unknown tv actors that were on an amazing series that we ne that never saw the light of day we can vote with our eyeballs namely josh mccougan a show called the wedding yeah but i think I, th I think this is kind of the future because every channel now is trying to split off into their own thing right yeah. hbo has their own streaming service stars showtime even cbs is getting into that game so that you yeah. can only watch that star trek show on that streaming service. So I think this is definitely the future, though I am gonna miss kind of that water cooler week to week talk, like like an episode of Game of Thrones. We're gonna all watch it here. Sure. After every week, after every episode, everyone's gonna be talking about that one episode for the mm -hmm. week. When you do binging, you can't do that. Like with right. Daredevil, we were all in different places, so we didn't, hey, how far are you? I can't yeah. talk to you about 
this because you aren't that far yet. So. And there's also too there's event TV like Game of Thrones, like Walking Dead, but there's also event binges yeah. like Daredevil or um, Orange Is the New Black. You could create event binges oh, that's with so other sweet shows. Of you to put Orange Is the New Black in there. Have you watched this most recent season? Bye bye. Continue. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. <laughs> I'm just saying other bin, what uh, House of Cards. What binge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, Sinead, what's next? FX's It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia has been renewed for its 12th, 13th, and 14th season on the network. The 14th season will tie the all-time record of seasons by a live-action comedy show set by Ozzie and Harriet in the 1950s. The comedy that all started with a camcorder pitch from a Hollywood apartment, which originally aired on FX and moved to FXX, has just ended its 11th season in early March. David, does It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia deserve to be mentioned in the pantheon of all-time great comedies? I think so, and I'm, I'm new to it. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I just started watching this recently. I'm only on episode five. I just watched oh, the. Uh, man. I, just, I just watched the uh, Charlie Has Cancer episode. It's episode four of season one, Damn. so uh, I'm still new to it. But I love uh, the FX comedies. I love You're the Worst. I love the League when that was on. Uh, no, I, I, I agree. It's it's weird though. It's I need to get more into it to, to see if it's in the pantheon. Because I think of great comedies, and I'm maybe going old school here. Like I think of shows like The Golden Girls, and I think of like Seinfeld, and even more more recently, Parks and Recreation was one of my favorite comedies. I'll be honest, my go-to genre is not comedy. If you were to give me, David, here's this new comedy I want to check out. Here's this new drama. I'm always going to check out the drama first. Yeah, don't you watch all, all those white period pieces? Yeah, I, yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. I like, I like the white period British pieces. British time yeah. dramas, yeah. French yep. time dramas. Yeah, and I mean, all that if stuff. you give me Charlie Day and uh, 14 <laughs> season of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, you say, Dave, guess what? Downton Abbey coming back, son. <laughs> yeah. Coming back. I'm going to watch Downton Abbey first. Dave, it's all about the drama. But no, I, I mean, th 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 this is huge. Uh, not, not to uh, belittle this. Th 12, 13, 14 season, that, that's massive. I mean, that's... It has to be credited as one of the better comedies of all time. To have that stain power, that's a long time. Yeah. There's a way back, this is maybe eight or nine years ago, FX made a, a, a contest for people to basically do the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia model, which, mm -hmm. if you think about it, kind of created YouTube. Totally. It created the web series. It created the, I'm going to shoot a series with my buddies in my backyard and hope that somebody picks it up because... This has only really happened a couple times, and, and for this to go on this many seasons, I think it is a cultural phenomenon. Now, on the flip side of things, it is extremely funny still. Uh, I laugh all the time, Some, and the episodes are still current. They, they stay with current issues, but is it the fact that FXX can just be like, well, we're, we're just keep paying their contracts. Mm -hmm. Like they, If they want to keep making it, none of these guys are megastars. I mean, Charlie Day has done a couple of movies. The rest of them, besides Danny DeVito, who shoots all his scenes in two weeks, <laughs> we can get these guys for a little bit more money each year. They want to direct, they want to produce. This is their baby. They want to keep working. They want to keep acting. Let's just keep giving them the scene. I don't, Again, it's it because it's never part of the lexicon or part of the conversation. Like, you know what the greatest comedy of all time is? It's always in sunny Philadelphia. Maybe seasons four, five, and six or something like that. But there's so many seasons now. Yeah. I don't know if it's exactly like the ratings boost or if it's just like, you know what, guys? Keep you're going. Doing, you're doing yeah. good You're doing stuff. great. Keep you know? it going. It's like the all-star linebacker that keeps making tackles, but he's not exactly Lawrence Taylor in 1988. Totally. I mean, the thing is, I was watching High Maintenance last night, yeah. just which I've already seen, but I was like, let's just watch it again. And that show wouldn't exist or be going to HBO if this hadn't proven mm -hmm. that you can do that and that yeah. it can be successful. I think everything you said is totally right on. This sort of changed the landscape of what people expect, the web series model. My biggest problem with the show, because it is, it's super funny and it's so watchable, but there is not a single moment that I can look to. Like there are family guy moments that yeah. I still think of and will right. like make myself pee laughing. <laughs> there are moments from like even Cheers, which sort of changed what sitcoms could be that are so memorable. What? There is one moment in the entire show when he creates Nightman, Dayman, and Dayman is awesome. <laughs> the day man. Night, Nightman is yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he writes a musical for The Waitress. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, there are some quotes in the show, but you're right. Like I said, there aren't many moments in It's Always in Sunny Philadelphia where you're like, oh, it's like a Mac moment or it's a yeah. total Dennis moment. Charlie is a standout star. And they they can they've continued seasons through him. That's a good point. You can't just drop quotes. Like I think with Seinfeld, you can drop a quote and, and everyone around everyone you. Everyone's just like, like oh, no, yeah. well, yeah, Seinfeld. Yeah. But I don't think yeah, yeah it's not that iconic. Kind of, you know. Dennis. Yeah, it's for me. It, it won't fall into the great. I, I I like the show, and I I got up to season six or seven. Started to get repetitive. They yeah. even did storylines within those seasons where they referenced it, that they were do, redoing <laughs> a storyline again. Yeah. So for me, I, I I like it, but I just I wouldn't put it there in the in the greats. Okay. Sinead, do you watch It's Always Sunny? I do, actually. Yeah. Um, I think it's funny, yeah, but I I agree with you guys. Like, I won't choose 
that over watching friends for the 150th time yeah. mm. or watching family guy for the 400th time um like there are family guy episodes and friends episodes and seinfeld episodes that i'll watch over and over yeah. and over and over again I don't know if I would do the same for It's Always Sunny. Yeah, I, that's a good point. Yeah. It doesn't, it's sometimes, some of them have the rewatchability, some don't. All right, time for a superhero rundown. Put your capes on, get your super ha- superpowers ready. It's time to get weird. Sinead, what's up first? Okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Weird. Sinead, stop making fun of me, okay? <laughs> I love you, you're great. <laughs> I, have to, I have to make up the, the club sound for Josh McCuka. It's like, I don't <laughs> club. I'm pop, not a Jersey <laughs> douche. Pop, pop your collar, Josh. <laughs> You guys want some? I think give one of these. I believe I believe that you're not a Jersey doucher. You just kind of look like a Jersey doucher. So anyway, we just alienated all our fans from New Jersey. I knew a caller would just set me over the top, guys. (laughs) Shane, what's first in superhero rundown? Jessica Henwick, who recently played Nymeria Sand on Game of Thrones, will join the cast of Netflix's Iron Fist as Colleen Wing, a martial arts master that has the ability to harness her chi to increase her strength and accelerate her healing power. She plays a central role in Iron Fist development and Danny Rand's assimilation back into New York. New York. Dennis, how do you feel about the casting of Jessica Henwick? Oh, I think it's great. I, I met her several years ago, and that was before she got cast in Game of Thrones. And seeing her career go, she's been on Game of Thrones, she's in Star Wars briefly in The Force Awakens, and now this. I actually remember watching when we were binging Daredevil Season 2 and seeing Elektra, and I looked at, at Elodie Young, who did a fantastic job, and I thought that Jessica Henwick might have been a good for that role she looks a little bit too young for that so i think this one's perfect especially because she has a martial arts background she Mm -hmm. did a show called spirit wars back in the uk and i think it fits well with with this character see i don't know a ton about iron fist and we talked about this uh, a couple weeks ago in the first episode um i I don't know the comic book that that well i know that obviously netflix is going to do some amazing things with it i will say that all a lot of the times when you're describing the stuff going on in Iron Fist, I'm not sold on it. Like, this kind of sounds like a girl who's really good at yoga and somehow unlocked the <laughs> power What do you mean? You're potential. not fascinated by somebody who can harness their, <laughs> their chi? <laughs> yeah. uh, again, I, uh, she was great in Game of Thrones. That that whole clan of... I, I hate those bitches. I love the I hate them. <laughs> The Sand Snakes are bitches. I love the Sand Snakes. Wow. It's like all my ex-girlfriends you, you, you in like one. The, you like, the, like see, that scene in the jail? No, that scene you know? was awesome. I'm not saying it wasn't awesome. I'm just saying I hate those bitches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Damn. Um, but that being said, I think that she's awesome. I didn't, Dave, take it. I don't know. I'm... I'm no, I think she has a, a great look. Like De- Dennis knows more about her than I. I mean, in Game of Thrones, she was the most one of the more underused of the snakes. We didn't. She didn't have a lot of lines. I think all of them were pretty. It's just under- the one, the one with the short hair that was doing the flirting in the the jail yeah. sale scene. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm more excited to see more of her. She has, she's the pilot in Star Wars: Force Awakens had a very uh, small role. But I, I like when they use unknowns. I think that's yeah. good when they use unknowns. They have a lot to prove. They're going to bring it. Not just going to phone it in. I mean, I'm excited to see what she's going to do. Sasha. I know nothing about Iron Fist, so I'm kind of like I'm a blank slate until I see it, and if it's great, then great, and if it sucks, it sucks. But you I'll know try who they to... cast as the um, as Iron Fist, Danny mm-hmm. Rand. I saw that, it's and a, I think that'll be the cool. Nine of Flowers. <laughs> there are yeah, a lot of Loras games. Tyrell, <laughs> basically so two Game of Thrones <laughs> two, actors right. in the main role yeah. for this series. It's there's like two rules in Hollywood. If you were in a Steven Spielberg war movie, your career <laughs> was made. If you were in Game of Thrones, your career <laughs> yeah. has been made. Uh, you're throwing these guys on Iron Fist. I, listen, I know so little about Iron Fist that this gets me excited. What doesn't get me excited is lines like, uses her chi to yeah. increase the power. I'm, I'm probably gonna get It's a good up. story, it's okay. a good story. So I, I, I brought today, you can't see us obviously behind the scenes, uh, I brought Sasha the first volume of Preacher. Which was so cool of you and I am so excited to read and was already taken by Wendy because she wants to read it too. <laughs> so so next week, whenever you finish, I'll bring you the first volume of Iron Fist. Cool, um, thanks it's good. man. It's really good. I'd like to point the out lending library. what am I chopped liver? Yeah, uh, I, feel like I requested my first it, I requested it because yeah. I haven't yeah. read them and I want to be, I don't want to be like a complete neophyte. I want to know a little bit. I don't mean to leave you out, Josh, I'm sorry. David has, it's like a library now. Yeah. Everyone needs like yeah. a David library card. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, my <laughs> library card costs money. I'm charging. And it, co- it costs you in beard follicles. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Preacher, what's next? <laughs> Sinead. In an interview with Collider.com, Preacher showrunner and Breaking Bad alum Sam Catlin stated that the series won't be Preacher Light or Preacher TV. In other words, the dark, violent series will try its damnedest to appease its loyal fan base who want the darkness it's accustomed to. Josh, how exactly do you think that AMC is going to pull this off? Well, I think had Preacher come around maybe six or seven years ago, we wouldn't. It wouldn't appease the fans because they were. We weren't to the point where uh, it, you know, it, it didn't get. 
we, we didn't have like the violence of the walking dead mm -hmm. and stuff like into the badlands which i really didn't watch a lot of but it was very violent uh i think amc has a little bit of carte blanche right now because of you know the violence in breaking bad and all the kind of stuff they are that next step right before hbo as far as violence mm -hmm. and darkness and that kind of stuff goes you bring in a guy from breaking bad he already has like a little bit of thing with amc so they're going to trust him and they're going to trust what he's going to do. And, I mean, Seth Rogen, these guys, these are big players in the market. So whatever they say, AMC is probably going to be like, listen, we might lose a lot of sponsors, but let's <laughs> see what we're going to do. What do you think, Dave? I think, I think they can push it. I mean, people versus – I'm still learning the rules of television and what they can and can't do because people versus OJ, I thought you could only – Use an f bomb like once a season or something. People versus OJ Simpson's dropping f bombs like every single yeah. episode. At least one, one per episode. Maybe that's the rule. One per episode to be TVMA. Mm -hmm. uh, I know South Park, you know, bleeps it out. But then they'll, if you watch it on Hulu or something, then it's you know it's unedited. Right. But with this, I think they're gonna go all out with this. I think they're gonna like Dennis. I know is gonna have more experience because he's actually seen the pilot. But uh, yeah, AMC is perfect for this. I think it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, if you guys had watched last week's episode, yeah. you guys played a clip that me and yeah. Mark reviewed it after we saw it at WonderCon. And yeah, it's definitely not Preacher Light. It's not toned down it is dark it's got a sense of humor to it but it's twisted and the violence in it it's yeah it's pretty gruesome i i, I wouldn't say daredevil season two gruesome but it's mm. it's get up there and wow. I, I i think they are pushing the lines with tvma in, tor in terms of violence and mm. with language also well, i was gonna say so real quick sorry uh, i know there's a lot of hannibal fans out there and all the people were disappointed when hannibal was canceled after what three seasons and hannibal on nbc i don't even think that was tvma i want to say it was tv 14 that was gruesome that's a rough episode, show. Was it episode three that started? Do you remember? Like well, it was very. Oh, it's, yeah. Intense. I mean, bodies getting carved up and very dark imagery. I mean, yeah. that was an intense show. I mean, I I think that AMC, FX, all these mm -hmm. shows. I was shocked on People versus OJ when they dropped the MF. I was like, wait, yeah. but that, is that, they do is that? that? I'm like, oh, yeah. they, oh, Marsha yeah. Clark's is a straight yes. up. Yeah, oh, she does. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, yeah. damn, girl. <laughs> But I think that you have to do that now. Like, this isn't 1960. We don't have people sleeping in separate beds. Everybody curses. Unless if you, don't you wanna... have a snoring problem, then you're my parents. So that's <laughs> my... <laughs> real, real personal. Good little inside <laughs> information in the Makuga yeah. household. Oh, 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 <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. They totally, totally love each love other. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. special. <laughs> uh, but the more that you guys talk about the show, the more hyped I get. Oh, yeah. And Dennis, you've said nothing but great things, and I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed with it. Better than The Walking Dead? Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Too soon, Great Sinead. Sure. Too soon. <laughs> All right, finally, what do we got up in Superhero Rundown, Sinead? The Flash ventured onto Supergirl last week on CBS. The episode gave the rookie series a nice spike in ratings and opened the door for other crossovers of its kind. David, what did you think of the Super Flash crossover? Well, I, I enjoyed World's Finest. I thought, I thought it was great. I mean, I, I love the Flash. I love this whole, uh, you know, infinite universes, multi-Earths that we're getting. We get Earth 2, you know, we got the whole Zoom storyline going on. on the Talking about that in the Flash recap show here on Collider. I, I, I love Supergirl. I, I've been enjoying that show. I think it's gotten better and better. It's, it's still not up there with the Flash. It's not as good as Legends of Tomorrow or even how Arrow was, especially when Arrow in Season 2. But it's still enjoyable, still entertaining. And seeing those two together was fantastic. I thought they had great chemistry. If there's a relationship, I want to see people get together. I want to see them. Them together, I think they would be a great couple. But of course, you know he has to go back to his earth. He can't do that. But I, David, I thought it was shipping, fun. You're shipping uh, Flash and Supergirl, man. Yeah, why not? Right. That big, yeah. You're like chomping at the bit. I know. No, that I'm gonna you save have... mine for last. Go yeah, I see him. Like, yeah. I, I see him. Like, as I'm describing this, like how, how much I like, it, I yeah. see him. They're like, I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, well, let's just all go around and say I really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. I thought that it was sweet and it was fun. It was fluffy, but it was totally enjoyable. And I think that actually it made the Supergirl game step up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it made it more engaging because sometimes that show can have some dips and lulls. I thought that it was a really well-paced episode. I thought it was really, really fun. Dennis? Ratings went up yeah, too. Um, Ratings spiked. Rating spike. I enjoyed it. I, 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 I don't watch Supergirl because I watched the first two episodes and it wasn't for me. This episode won't change that because everything I liked about it was about Flash yeah. and his interactions with Supergirl and she's great too. Once they got to the villains, I think the villains are super cheesy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, yeah, the tone of the show just isn't for me. So I, while I enjoyed it, I will not be coming back to Supergirl. Joshua McCuga. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Uh, no, okay. With Supergirl, I'm with Dennis on this. The tone, the lighting, the way it's shot, it's just so fluffy. I want my darkness in a little bit of superhero. Like, I don't want it to be so blown out that it's it's clearly network television. Melissa Benoist is super hot. I really think she's sexy. Everything about, but 
Supergirl, she is not. I don't, <laughs> there's nothing scary about her. She's like, guys, you shouldn't like me because I try hard. Like, it's not, it doesn't give me the dynamics I want from a super, a person from Krypton. The super in it is supposed to be like this, nobody can touch Supergirl. Supergirl, like, it keeps getting beat up by Electra, <laughs> like Electro Girl and Yelly Braves. I don't know, like. I, it just it didn't have it and flash and the arrow and even legends tomorrow which is only eight episodes in is mm -hmm. smashed supergirl i how i look at television is i watch three episodes if i'm not sold after three episodes because usually the pilot sometimes the worst episode mm -hmm. of the show second episode you should get better and if the third episode sells you i'm in sells you i'm in on the series supergirl I mean, by the third episode, I wanted to go back to the pilot because it was. <laughs> but I'm excited about what doors pilot. this opens because Berlanti says he wants to get her over with Flash, over with Arrow, over with Legends of Tomorrow, and that's going to be really cool. I'd love to see her on the CW. It was a great quote. Um, Calista Flockhart was saying, "Look at you, like you know, uh, I don't know something about like racially diverse group of people. You look like you're from a CW show. Non-threatening, yeah. non -threatening, racially Which, that's diverse. That's a key word. Yeah. For CW. Oh yeah, I mean, oh. you can be black on a CW show. You can't be black. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know." What I'm saying so um, I'm just gonna say that uh, but uh, it was so fantastic. Are you fantastic. saying that eggs isn't black? Eggs. I mean I, no I, I don't know it's just you know it's just a CW. I love Macaw Brooks. Wait I have a question. He's great. For you yeah. He's great. Okay not a TV show but Helen Slater did yes. you think that she was a badass Supergirl? Mm. Um, this from the movie? Yeah. This one, okay. Yes I mean. Because I feel like she and Melissa are very similar. Yeah I mean I, I didn't I think you could get somebody kind of darker in that role. Give me mm. somebody a little bit mm. of an edge. Melissa Benoist is so cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. She's so I think that's like look at me like, every and I, they she go was on, on Glee. Well, yeah. Isn't he, wasn't he from Glee too? So isn't like a kind of oh that's right he was cousin? yeah that's like right he was yeah. that's right. sorts. Yeah. Um, I am proud to say I did not watch Glee <laughs> yeah. that laid into its. But I, 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 I watched <laughs> the first two or three seasons. <laughs> You too, but then I, I gave liked up. it, and then well, it started sucking. Dennis watching so. Glee yeah. does not equate. <laughs> He's I like, like damn it, point to talking, about, talking about like demographics. Awesome. I think that this show is reaching a certain. Maybe it's they're not trying to reach us. I don't know if it's like our age range, yeah. but I think it, it it's hitting. It's doing what it's what it wants to do. I think Berlanti knows what he's doing. This is his <gasps> fourth show. So I think he knows what he's doing. Okay, wait, totally off topic. Who here is actually excited about Riverdale, the Archie comics retelling in a much darker vein that Berlanti is doing right now? No, I'll Go say around this. the table. Around the that's table. A, that sounds like an April Fool's joke. Yeah. Totally I mean. legit. Totally hey, legit. Hey, Sasha, let me run the show and I'll stay out of Riverdale. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so I'm taking that as a big old no. <laughs> that's, that's a no thanks on Archie. And is that the Bazooka Joe comics? Can they do a show on that? I'm like, that's not on my rundown. We <laughs> sorry, talked about I that. I said sorry. Off topic. Off topic. My bad. Back on topic. Okay. Sinead, you're in charge. Uh, we are going to go into what we are calling highlights and lowlights. In lieu of the power rankings, you guys, as fans, we listen to what you guys have to say. We love your hashtag, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. Thank you for all the comments in the YouTube section. We read them all. We like them. Uh, you guys have wanted us to talk about more TV. And there is so much TV out there. I, we thought that the power rankings didn't give us and you guys enough content and enough of a platform to talk about all this. So we're going to do something every week now called highlights and lowlights of the week. So we have it broken down into a few highlights and a few lowlights, and we'll be able to kind of just like discuss quickly around the table what we thought. Uh, so I'm going to go into the highlights of the week. I thought the Banshee premiere was absolutely fantastic. If you guys aren't watching Banshee, that is a show you can go and binge watch. Each week is an awesome action movie. Great acting, unknown people in a small Pennsylvania town. I didn't know that the show could be so sexy. Uh, people vs. OJ Simpson. Guys, we're coming on the the. Season Season finale is going to be tomorrow. Spoiler alert, he probably gets off. Um, <laughs> Peter Dinklage on SNL absolutely Woo! crushed it. He's got his space pants. That oh, space I pants was sketch it all is so day. good. Yes. Uh, 11 -63, the season finale was today. I Star highly Wars disagree with that. You don't think it was a I, highlight? I know. I don't like that show. Continue. Star Wars Rebels, uh, the Archer premiere, and Samantha B getting renewed all the way through the end of 2016. If you have been watching her, she's been uh, just a vision during this election. I love her. I think finally TBS got the right person in a talk show. Let's talk about some highlights. What do you guys think? Dude, People versus O.J. Simpson, that show. So actually, if you aren't caught up, it is such a great show to do like the last three episodes in a row because it is an incredible movie. It is mind-blowing. If it doesn't win every single Emmy, I will blow my brains out. And Archer, I'm like giving a lot of FX love, but it's because it's legitly great. Archer is hilarious. 
eat a dick gravity might be my new favorite hashtag. You have to watch that show. That show is so good. Uh, when you start talking about Archer, I feel like Archer is the kind of show that you would love, Sinead. Oh, it's hilarious. Like Do you, you watch it, Sinead? Um, I feel like I watched it like way back when. Get back into it. Yeah. It's so funny. They're in LA this season. I feel like I only watched like a couple episodes. Oh, man. Yeah, get into it. Because the amazing. last couple seasons have almost been standalone seasons. Yeah. Wire-esque, if you yeah. will. So I um, don't have to start at the beginning. No, no. Not at all. It was like Miami Vice last season. Now we're in LA. Yeah. It's just, it's so funny. Yeah. Man, it's good. Can we stay with Sasha just for a little bit longer? I'd like to hear some more about 11 and why uh, you were impressed with it. I, I didn't get to the finale because I found that show to be so... You talk about cheesiness. You talk about like weird blown out lighting that makes it seem fluffy. It's a Stephen King novel. Mm -hmm. I think that James Franco was overacting his ass off. It had nothing truly compelling for me. I would much rather sit down and read that book than watch like a not that great. We don't read books here on TV Talk. Yeah. <laughs> What's a book? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Nerds. Uh, no, I just, I, I watched the first two episodes and was really put off by it. And uh, I think that it was incredibly predictable. Mm. I'm, I'm, I was so sold on that show after the first episode. I, maybe it's because I'm kind of a history buff and I love anything that has to do with major historical events. Give me a World War II story and I'll read, watch anything. Um, I Give it a chance. Go, go watch. It's only eight episodes. More? I gave it two. You need me to give me your the other three you. Tests. I have to give it one, one more. more. All right, I'll give the it one more. Tests. And open, open mind. Listen, is James Franco the greatest actor of our time? No. Is he a good actor? Meh. But... He can he acts well in this, I think. No it's kind way. of a cheesy and his role. Chris Cooper stuff, the stuff with Chris Cooper, like now nah, I got <laughs> I'm coughing, so I have cancer. Oh, but it's an yeah. interesting way of time travel and the wormhole is really, really cool. Den, give me a highlight. What do you what do you uh, like? Here? For me, I mean obviously people versus OJ. That's a show that like week to week, when you talk about that water cooler moment and yeah. stuff that you want to talk about, it's always like, Hey, did you see the latest uh, people versus OJ? Because yeah. stuff all Courtney B. Vance, I think, should get a Emmy nomination. Hell yeah. same, same with Sarah Paulson. Yeah. Totally. Um, the other one and Sterling Brown Sterling Brown mm. is killing it yeah. they have so many good actors in there uh, the other highlight is Star Wars Rebels the season uh, yeah. 2 finale man yeah. that was so good it was to me on par with, with watching The Force Awakens that's how good it was there were some jaw dropping really? moments there like we, we all watched it here together we're like whoa I yeah. mean just getting into it I mean it was it ha it gave me some of those butterflies that I felt when I watched Star Wars The Force Awakens it's wow. fantastic I, I'm gonna go because I love this show so much. David and I were texting about Banshee. it. Banshee. Banshee. I knew it. <laughs> Banshee was Guys, good. Yeah. Banshee is... I, I got into it at the beginning of season two. So I binge watched the first season. And I would always... And I didn't know what it was about. It takes place in Pennsylvania, my home state. So I'm always a little, little you know, biased towards it. But this show hooked me, not only in the pilot, but in the first 10 minutes. This show has... It's, it's sexy. I mean, it's Cinemax, so you're going to see boobs every episode. <laughs> it's super All violent. right, boobs, all right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm Dennis in. is in. Put that on the queue. <laughs> but we watched the first three seasons, and it had such an unbelievably dynamic ending. And then this season premiere of season four, it's created a whole new television show. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of recreated itself into we are in the final season of the show. So now where does it go? It's eliminated certain characters. It was never afraid to end the, the, the season with not a bat and a camera blood. It would kill everybody on the show except for a couple of people. And every time they bring in somebody new on this show, they're awesome and they're badass. You guys, watch Banshee. You can't, you can't be sleeping on Cinemax. Cinemax has no. good stuff. The Nick. Just strike new, back. Oh, new, new, new Strike so Back. Great. New show called the, the Outcast. The Nick is really an up. HBO show that yeah. you put on Cinemax. Right. Yeah. I thought Cinemax is all like softcore porn. Well, Not there's that lot. too. I mean, they still later. have it. That's still later at night. Yeah. They're, they're that's original. the only times I've ever watched. That's called <laughs> Skinemax. Yeah. Yeah. No, but the thing also that they did that was really smart with Banshee is they do a lot of marathons of that show because mm -hmm. unfortunately this is its final season, which I don't think is that fair because it's a great show. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't watch it and don't pay attention, so they're taking it off. But they do marathon it a lot. So if you haven't watched it, there's still a possibility. Also, too, Amazon Prime members, season one's out. You can stream it right now if you have Amazon Prime. Yeah. Nice. The, I mean, the one thing that's great about Cinemax is that they don't care. Like, they're, they'll are they let you do whatever on the, the shows. And that's what Banshee, it's so violent, guys. If you love action movies, this friggin' show, mm -hmm. God, it's so good. Uh, all right, let's go into some lowlights. Ugh, not the best week for Arrow. He took a hit with bees. He, uh, there was just bees, bees in the episode. Bees. Oh. 
<laughs> it was brutal. I don't know who's writing Arrow these days, but it seems like it's just a dude improving. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> so bees in this episode. Uh, the Rush Hour pilot. The first episode. I was so excited to watch the Rush oh, Hour pilot. Dude. I Why? love the Rush. That was yeah. your first mistake. Yeah. The Rush Hour. The movie is incredible. Yes, the, the, movie with the movie is incredible. The Rush and Hour. Jackie Chan, the TV show with uh, two people. Wanna be Chris with Tucker two? and wanna be Jackie Chan. Yeah. But Bad. still, like, I mean, come on, it's Rush Hour. That was brutal. Uh, one of our one of our Shame. fans, uh, I don't want to call him out by name, was so excited he tweeted me, how excited are you to watch The Ranch? The Ranch is that oh. 70s show, but the worst episode of that 70s it's show? It's so painful. And I was really excited because you've got Sam Elliott and Deborah Winger. Yeah. And Deborah Winger, it, like in the opening credits, there's this like great version of Don't Let Your Sons Grow Up to Be Cowboys or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And you see a picture of Deborah Winger like straight out of Urban Cowboy. And then the show starts and it's so tonally screwed because it's a multi-camera sitcom <laughs> from like the 80s but with like ranch. but on an old west ranch and with that like dirty words work. and yeah, it's sort no. of like supposed what network to, is that it's, it's on netflix, netflix. It's, it's terrible it's ashton kutcher danny masterson sam oh, elliott and deborah yes. winger it's yeah. so and ashton so kutcher's bad. like i'm a gum ranch guy oh yeah they're but not used it. to be a quarterback it icy it's uh, so awful That's now funny. here's the device of one of the group of the low lights i'm we haven't talked about this uh, on the show at all vinyl the biggest disappointment in HBO. This is in the, the wrong Straight category. Uh, hey. I, I think there's a typo on the notes. Nope. It's in low lights. It should be in the highlights. David, we go back go to the highlights. All right, so I'm, I'm going to take control of the show right now. We're going to go back to the highlights <laughs> section. We're going back a segment. I'm taking over, and I'm going to talk about vinyl and why you need to be watching vinyl because vinyl is fantastic. First episode, two hour premiere. It is long, and it, 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 but it's fantastic. Long is the correct. Well, that's word. okay. Long, that's okay. Boring. But it, no, it's Marty Scorsese, Bobby Cannavale in the lead role, who is on my Dennis. I know you and I both love Boardwalk. Empire. Yeah. He was on our favorite season, season three of Borg Empire. He was Chip great. There's Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. And he is just owning this role. I mean, you have Ray Romano playing a, a Jewish person, you know, which he is not, but that's okay. Uh, just, just a fantastic cast. Olivia Wilde is owning it. Man, that is a beautiful woman, Olivia Wilde. You Wild. are. I like that she, she is beautiful. Is beautiful. Is a, She's beautiful. Really interesting job of selling this right now. This show <laughs> is so painfully bad. You've got Terrence Winter, an incredible writer, writing schlock. You've got Martin Scorsese, one of the greatest directors of our time, turning out absolute garbage. Bobby Cannavale, who's on, on Broadway, doesn't note. realize that there's actually a camera so you can bring it down, son. And if I'm telling you to bring it down, there's a problem. <laughs> okay. Remember we talked about how we can only use the F word? We're going to use like a 10 minimum oh F word here. Oh my on God. Show, so this just... show, it's so insanely poorly paced. It is no character do I care about. Not a single one. The plot line is ridiculous. And at the end of the day, I'm like, you guys should all be ashamed of yourself. And the only reason it got picked up for another season, because the ratings are through the toilet, is because they all had pay or play contracts and they were like, we're going to give them millions of dollars. Let's get millions of dollars and at least put a TV show on. But it's that music, poop. though. That music, though. If you can't get good music on a show that Mick Jagger is the music supervisor for, and P.S., his son should never act again. <laughs> right, I don't understand there's so calm much down. hate. Calm down. I calm hate down. that Sasha. show. So much and hate. it's so upsetting because I wanted to love it. I was so excited for it. But you know what's going to be great? Roadies, which is Cameron Crowe's version of the show, only it's actually going to be good. Here's I'm the like thing. Pink now, I'm so pink. Wait, you are. No, yeah, Man. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Sorry, David. Go ahead. Final. Hi, I, hi no, I'm done. I, I gave my. I guess no one likes the show. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for it. joining us today here on Glider <laughs> <Yeah>. TV. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I'll, I will try it. For thank you. you thank oh, you, Shanae. Shanae thank being you. so supportive. Thank and then you can text me and be like, "Girl," and I'll be like, "I know." David has the, no taste. The, the thing about vinyl, and I was I was so excited. I love Bobby, Bobby Cannavale. Classic rock is my stuff. I got made fun of the other day on Twitter because I called a Vegas a DJ a douche. You don't know anything about music. Listen, Fog Hat <laughs> is music. DJs are not music. Okay. Oof. What I'm saying is that vinyl missed. It just missed. What you could have, and I love how you said Ray Romano is Italian playing a Jewish guy because <laughs> Italians and Jews are so far off. Our parents are all very, uh, like, overwhelming loud parents. Like loud intense. We yell at, Their noses yes. are similar. <laughs> Yeah. Look at me. Look at me. Uh, so, uh, but what you what you missed in vinyl was you you have these amazing actors and an amazing time and you you went with this route of oh. a failing label instead of a, an unbelievably good label. But see, that's you, different though. We always start at the top, or we start somebody like rising from the bottom to get this. I like that they're starting with a person that's maybe maybe he's not good at his job. Maybe he's not good, and that's fine. We're watching somebody fail, but that's okay. Do you care about the conspiracy timeline? No, conspiracy story but I, I, I love the characters that inhabit the world. I'm interested in where their stories are going. I'm interested in Olivia Wilde. I mean, it, it's over the top, but it's no different than any other soap opera. 
I still think Olivia it's, Wilde, the entire show is one note. She totally. just cries. Yep. Except for the full frontal part where she still cried. Uh, <laughs> it's you, you, she's just crying. Like every time, uh, 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 Finestra, what's his, what's his, uh, uh, I mean, Danny Finestra, what's his, his, the character's name? Johnny, Danny, I don't know. Yeah, I can't. I can't Bobby Cannavale. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby Cannavale. Yeah. Every actor, time yeah. Bobby Cannavale is in a scene with Olivia Wilde, she's just like, yeah, and starts crying. It's like, hey, Olivia Wilde, you are an amazingly good actress. Stop freaking crying. And you mean you're not choice. happy to see Bobby kind of probably snorting coke in those veins every time he does? Listen, like, oh, and I the mean, way he's... he snorts coke, even the way he snorts coke is overdone. I'm yes. like, go back. <laughs> Boys, act I don't want to. I don't want to vouch. I don't want to throw myself on her bus here, but you don't do drugs like that. Okay? Wow, that's not how you wow. do drugs. <laughs> Unless the drugs back in the '70s were that much crazier, and they weren't. They we they yeah. gotten better in recent years. Apparently, I don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Um. All right, but Dennis, what do you think? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're yelling at each other over here. I'm I sorry. actually, for the low lights, I don't actually watch any of the shows. I know you guys talked about uh, how bad that Arrow episode was. Yeah. You guys mm. just drone, droned on about yeah. it. <laughs> um, Dennis Zen, everybody. Yeah, but you have uh, Walking Dead on that low light list, and it, I'm just still in shock of yes. like how... That is the lowest. The, the turn, the 180 the fans did on it. Because mm -hmm. I already was there, and everyone else just went... Mm -hmm. And I was like... I was surprised. Yeah. All right. Highlights and lowlights, guys. <laughs> Hashtag us Collider TV Talk. Give us some highlights of your week next week or your lowlights. Or if you like vinyl and you want to support my bearded friend over here. <laughs> you guys or... just tired me out. Yeah, <laughs> some help over I here. Like I, yeah. I, I feel like I was watching all of you like, <laughs> with my mouth open, just like, what? <laughs> all right. Uh, in lieu of streaming spotlight this week, we are going to do a pilot review of The Path starring Aaron Paul on Hulu, Michelle Monaghan. Uh, I. The first two episodes are available on Hulu right now. We're just going to talk about the pilot, hence the title, Pilot Review. So everybody at the, the table watched it. I'm, I'm going to let this, let this simmer. I'm going to let you guys take it, and I'm going to wow. say my opinion. David, go ahead. Well, uh, I'll take the lead on this one. I loved it. Only seeing the pilot, of course. We're talking about the pilot here. Uh, There's no uh, way I would go uh, ahead and watch the second uh, episode. So just on the pilot Griffin. alone, um, I, I really it reminds me of The Leftovers. I was going to say no, 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 it same Thing. Leftover first season was rough, right? Ten Sinead? minutes in, I was like, "This is like the leftovers." It's like the leftovers, mm -hmm. but leftovers came back season two, and I think it was, it was my top better. show of, of oh. last year. It was just fantastic. This show feels like that, but it feels a little more focused. It's slow. The pilot is slow. It takes some time to build. But again, going back to the performances, uh, is it Hugh, um, the guy from Hannah, Hugh Dancy, mm -hmm. British actor, fantastic. I like his American accent. I think he does a, a good job there. Aaron Paul, Michelle Moynihan, uh, a little bit of um, uh, Minka Kelly in there too, yeah. which oh, yeah. is always good. Never too much Minka Kelly. She's fantastic. And uh, I, I really liked it. It is slow, but I love the cult stuff. I, I love. I'm, I'm, I, I went to seminary, so I love theology and that all that kind of study. So I mean, it's, it's my oh. gear. Like you like the history. Yeah, I went to seminary. I could have been a pastor. Uh, so when I preach. You listen, um, but uh, no, I, I really enjoy this. I hope people stick with it. I think the pilots, people are like, oh, it's slow. It doesn't really go anywhere, but I, I recommend sticking with this. I think it's going to be good. Then I, I thought it was solid. I didn't love it like David did. It's it's one of those things where we haven't gotten far enough to to tell whether I'm going to love it or hate it yet, mm -hmm. because this is one of those things where the subject matter is very interesting. But if you go down a certain path with me. Mm -hmm. And it gets too silly or too corny or too mm. cheesy. I'm going to, you know, because there's already things in it that are, are kind of predictable. Mm -hmm. And if you go a certain way, I may just like end up hating it. But for now, I'll, I'll watch a couple more. I think the acting's good in it. It's good to see Aaron Paul. You know, he, he tried to do a Need for Speed. He was in the uh, Triple Nine movie. Try is a good word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Triple Shame. Nine wasn't, you know, yeah. the best. Uh, but here he's kind of more back to form where you actually see him inside a developing a character yeah yeah he's a he has, has a, a, a great way of getting into certain characters yeah. i love seeing his mind work as he's acting very good uh sasha what do you think um similar to actually everybody i'm sort of split between like i liked a lot of stuff i'm not sure if it's gonna end up being cheesy and too predictable mm -hmm. i mean the first moments of it i was like this is full-on the leftovers mm -hmm. and then there's a very cool shot where i was like oh this is full-on carrie fukunaga Thank you so much for True Detective mm. season one, like an overhead shot going into some woods. Um, I think the acting is good. However, if you have seen either Going Clear, which is the fantastic mm -hmm. documentary yeah, about Scientology, awesome. yeah. or The Master, I think that this topic has been tackled in a better way, but we've never seen it done this well on TV. I think that what they need to do is it felt a little bit melodramatic, but like mm -hmm. you said, pilots very frequently are the worst episode of a show. Mm -hmm. I think if they can 
turn down the score that they had blasting to let me know exactly how I should feel in every moment because I'm smart. I can figure out how to feel mm-hmm. in every moment. Um, I think that if they let it breathe a little bit more, it is slow, but I think that it's such a fascinating world, but they have to make it a little darker, a little kookier. The final shot of the pilot was the one where I was like, yep, back, watching another episode, mm-hmm. totally doing this. That, I think, is the most mm-hmm. interesting part. And I think that uh, Michelle Moynihan is somebody who is just eminently watchable. Uh, yeah, you hit on my subject right there at the end. I think Michelle Monahan, Moynihan, is it Monahan? Mahanigan. I think it's Mon- Mahanigan. I always Sinead. say Monahan. Yeah, I think it's Bridget Moynihan, Michelle Monahan. I don't anyway. think so. Thank you. Thank Anna you. Bad I'm bad like bad. Monaghan. Michelle Monaghan in a Bridget Moynihan film. Okay. <laughs> um, you, I am so intrigued by religion and cultish things and how people are, uh, you know, brainwashed into mm-hmm. thinking that this is the way to be, that this is their life. And uh, they listen to everybody and they, they, they form these cults, these communities. And Going Clear was the perfect thing. I watched that twice because I was kind of shaken by it and the fact that I live so close to that oh, creepy, creepy building <laughs> here in LA that that it, it really got me in a weird, weird place. And I grew up Catholic and, and uh, I think organized religion is, is in a weird place right now because it's dominating so much of the world and, and all these crises that we're in right now are based in religion. And I think this is a perfect time for this show to explore a lot of that. I think there's a little bit on the nose with Scientology by not calling it Scientology or calling but, it Myerism. But the, like, Scientology whatever. does exist in this world though. There is that they do many Mention like like somebody's like is this Scientology? Oh, is and that basic- in episode two, David? No, yeah, no, that's yeah, the pilot. Yeah, uh, no, uh, no, that, that's uh, in the pilot. No, uh, I only yeah, watched one I episode. Don't yeah. that. Oh, I don't remember that. He's gonna, yeah. he's gonna be quiet for the rest yeah. of the segment. But <laughs> Michelle Monahan plays that 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 loyal follower. Oh, that yeah. That is. It's my rhythm and there's nothing else and I'm 6D and the levels and you're paying in these levels. You Dancy is fantastic. The girl who was in Shameless, I don't, I forget her name in Shameless. She played the sister uh, to Mickey oh. and she was Lips kind of love interest two seasons ago. She plays the girl who's the drug addict who then takes uh, uh, you Dancy to the thing, yeah. spoiler, yeah. to the, uh, she, I thought she was I great. I wasn't sure if that was a dream a, sequence or actually happening. Yeah. Mm. Um, I love, I love the investigation, things like um, Jonestown. Mm-hmm. Is this is kind of similar to Jonestown and at legit drinking the Kool Aid? I ju- I just love to see where they would take this because you kind of do have carte blanche when it comes to religion and what you're able to pull off and the cultish nature of it. And th- and we haven't seen it. We really haven't seen it. I thought The Master was a failure. I did not like that movie. I thought it was slow. I thought it was average. But Going Clear has kind of inspired us to see that they're this is real life inspired by true events, and we can see more. I think you know. We did the pilot review. Once the season's over, we can we can talk about it. Again. I will say one thing about the master. Go back and watch the intake scene. That's just Joaquin Phoenix and oh, the brilliant Philip Seymour Hoffman, who I will miss till the end of my days. And it is one of the most intense, probably like seven minutes. That my you favorite will watch. scene it's of the movie. It's my favorite scene. And that just to see that and to realize that that's surely inspired Audited. by how it's done. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that movie crazy. I actually really enjoyed it. But yeah. next. Um, I will continue watching this show simply based on the storyline and the acting. I will would not continue watching the show because I loved the pilot. I didn't love the pilot. Hmm. Um, it was super slow and way too much like the leftovers for me only because it kind of like I, I just kept having the leftovers in my mind throughout the entire show because of the tone of the show. It's very um, melodramatic, very kind of like, like I what's the word I'm looking for? It's sad, I guess. Like somber, melancholy, somber, melancholy, yeah. exactly, melancholy. Yeah. It's, it's humorless. There's not a lot of comedy in it. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, not not at all. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's good. I think Aaron Paul is great, and I think it's it's great to see him. But like watching him act in the path, I was like. Oh, it's a shame he's not on a better show. Mm, I kept yeah. calling him Pinkman the I entire will, time. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, Magnets, even bitch. I didn't love it like you did, but I did love one scene, and that was a scene when he's telling the story yes. of why he's why he oh. came, and he starts and, crying. Yes, and then the other guy, Cal, comes in and starts finishing oh, story, yeah. his story. It's like, oh, now you yes. know where they're coming from. Yeah. Right. This guy's like to him, it's it's just a story he can use to yeah. sell to these newcomers. Mm-hmm, totally. Where where Aaron Paul's character, I think his name's Eddie, like that's like deep into his heart. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. acting is really good, and the storyline is super intriguing um, because of Scientology and things like that. But I don't know. 
I don't know. Sinead is on the fence. All right, finally, we are here at Twitter question, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. Send it in all week, every week. If we like it, we'll answer it. Sinead, what is first? At Gringo Geek 90 says, what streaming service has the best TV goodness in your opinion and why? Hulu, Netflix, or Amazon? I mean, I feel like we could all say this in unison. Netflix. Netflix. Mm -hmm. but, but don't sleep. Amazon's creeping up. Yeah, Amazon's creeping. Uh, they have, um, I love um, Bosch, Catastrophe, yeah, Bosch. Okay. Bosch. I liked uh, Man in the High Castle. I thought was really good. Transparent. Uh, Transparent's fantastic. They're, they're creeping up there. I agree. I think Netflix is the king right now. Hulu's getting a couple shows. I think this was talking about the path. The path would have benefited from just being dumped. Yes. So I think maybe oh, some yeah. people, because of that pilot, you do get episode two if you choose to watch that. But because of that pilot being though the pace in it is, people might be like, eh, it's not really my thing. But I think if there was there, if it was available, more episodes, you might stick with it more. I will say one thing though. We'll, we'll all agree that it's Netflix, but the, the, the bar that Netflix has set has inspired some amazing mm -hmm. creative visions yeah. at things like Hulu and Amazon. And, and Hulu just started doing more right. of yeah. the original stuff. Hulu. It depends because like I still subscribe to cable, so mm -hmm. I'm paying my cable bill, and Hulu covers a lot of the stuff I'm already paying for, so yeah. that's why I don't subscribe to it. Amazon Prime, on the other hand, I, I get mainly because of the delivery service, <laughs> and the streaming service is just a bonus. Yeah. Netflix <laughs> is the only thing I pay for because I actually want to watch the content. The yeah. thing that's still deceiving with Netflix, and this is a shout out to my UK brothers and sisters out there, is that they try to take credit for these BBC shows. Like, it's a Netflix original. It's like, I'm watching Happy Valley, which is, we can maybe talk about that in another segment. It's yeah. fantastic. It's a great cop show. It's not, it says Netflix original. It's not a Netflix original. They have the rights from the BBC States. to air that. Also, there's a show called River with a Papa Skarsgård, Stellan mm -hmm. Skarsgård's in there. Oh. Fantastic. Six episodes, self-contained story. Go watch it now. Again, they say a Netflix original. It's not really a Netflix I think original. Once, I think once <clears throat> a network gains distribution right, rights, they can, call it that, they yeah. can really do, whatever do it, they want. whatever they yeah. want. Let's do a Sinead original fan tweet here. What's next? All right. at I want to say this is probably supposed to be Chris Awesome. No, that, I, I read that right. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, your typos were all over the place today. So. Well, you know what, Sinead? Ooh. I'm just kidding. Ooh. At Kriya Awesome says, who is your favorite movie actor that came from a long-running TV show? George Clooney. George That's Clooney. ER, yeah. Yeah. Well, of both people. ERs. There was sitcom ER right. and regular ER, and he was on Facts of Life, and he was <clears> on Roseanne. Like, but I feel like everybody knew him as Dr. Doug Ross, and now he's Dr. George Clooney. Mm. Thank you, sir. I guess I would say after seeing uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, I don't quote me on this. Did Goodman, oh. did he get famous from Roseanne? From Roseanne. Yeah. That's right, well, then then he's, he, he might be one of my one. favorites. Oh, then, that's yeah. a good one, man. You really just good brought one. up Roseanne. That's a really, really good one. Uh, <clears throat> man, that's, that's, I've been like thinking. I've been trying to like rack my brain. Two Dennis, great you got actors out of Well, Roseanne, I mean, there's a, a lot yeah. of, I don't know how long running, like how long running was Bosom Buddies? Tom Hanks came from Oh, yeah. my God. Oh. Yeah. Right you know? on. Oh, uh, uh, Leo. Yeah, Leo. Growing pains. Growing pains. Growing pains. Yeah, Leo. Yeah. 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 Oh man, but he was only on the last season. That's true. He no, was just brought in to bring up the rating. And some <laughs> of the newer guys like Idris Elba was on the wire for so yeah. long. Yeah. Luther, Luther, Luther as well. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I could go on the flip side and tell you two people that I don't like from long running TV shows that are movie stars. <laughs> Please do. That whose movies aren't very good. Jennifer Aniston is really besides like horrible bosses. I will none love of her, her until the day that I die. <laughs> yeah, no, she's but she's, she's Rachel Green Rachel to me. And yes. Her Rachel yes. Of, like choker. And. Uh, well, now I'm gonna get smashed. I'm not gonna get smashed. <laughs> you have no, to say it. Catherine Heigl. As soon as she left, uh, Grey's why did he get every, smashed over that? that she's so, every, like every movie she's done is just been like garbage. Catherine Heigl starring in the flop of the year. Yeah, <laughs> when's the last time you saw her in a movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. true, Shame. true. Shame. Next, Sinead. at Liberty Fan 1427 says, "Will there ever be a successful two-hour a week cable drama similar to what Frank, what is that? Darabont, Darabont tried to do with Mob City." Well, you had Sherlock sort of did it. Yeah, they're doing but it's only hours, three episodes per season, right. an hour and a half to two hours a piece. I, I can't see in like six or ten episodes. That's yeah. just too much. I mean, the only show that does two hours is The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. So, uh -huh. they, yeah, they're two hour episodes. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's worth two hours of pure gold. Oh, 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 hold on one second. Hold on one second before you before you guys freak out on each other. All right. Wish I could double that. I would watch four hours. I would too. I will say this is that's a different TV talk all together. This was my this is my first season of watching. Bachelor because I have a girlfriend and that's what you do in a relationship. You watch. Uh, that's right. That's what you don't single, want to watch. Right. Single, my husband my husband watch TV you don't want to watch. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, just a spoiler alert this week, guys, on CSI Cyber, they, they solved the crime. Oh, um, thank God. Yeah, thank God. And so um, 
I watched this season of The Bachelor because we did like a fantasy. You like we drafted the girls and like the last person oh with a girl. Wait, this is you and your girlfriend? No, no, no. This is level. friends. We watched it with oh. some friends. No, um, I will totally take you on because I yeah. won. Full yeah. on predicted the whole last five. Wait, like th this anyway. life exists? Yes. Yes. This you, life you exists. There is, there is a fantasy for it. it, it is, is, I think it it's because I'm single. I don't. I don't. I don't understand it is, this. It is television that makes you cringe, makes you giggle. It's just terrible. It's so bad and so funny and so dumb and so hilarious. All right, let's do one more tweet. One more tweet. Mr. Movie Girl. Maniac underscore says, what are your favorite TV opening sequences? Uh, just Ooh. the 10 of us. It's a 90s sitcom, the greatest oh, yeah. song in the history. Spin off of, of Growing Pains. Correct. Thank you very much. Coach what? Lubbock. <laughs> Doing it the best I can. <laughs> Nothing comes easy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> refute that with a little something called, now this is a story all oh. about how my life got That's a great one. Down, well done. I'd like to take a minute to just sit right Dan? there. Uh, I mean, I talked to, I think we answered this in a mailbag over the weekend. I, 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 Game of Thrones has oh, such a fantastic man. opening. Peter and, James, the, and, the, Peter and James, the song gets Peter stuck James, in your head. It like, does. Like forever. Like you can't stop thinking about it. Riley and I were singing it. Yeah. Dave? Uh, I got to go with The Simpsons. I mean, it changes oh, yeah. on a week to week basis, of course. But I mean, they've had some of the most iconic openings ever. Also, Black Sails. If you don't even watch Black Sails, just go on YouTube and look up Black Sails intro. It's 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 the music. Barry McCreary does. Barry McCreary did Battlestar Galactica. He does Walking Dead. He did Ten Cloverfield Lane. Great com great composer. It's it's a fantastic. She made. Um, obviously, I love the Friends opening sequence. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> um, I have like four part harmony for it at all times. Um, I also really love the opening sequence for House of Cards. Oh, oh yeah. yes, yes, girl, good girl. yes, mm -hmm. that song Great is song. so good. That similar. song is so good. Game of Thrones, yeah. just the and way House it's of Cards. shot, like yeah. it's, oh, it's beautiful. Mad Men had the violins too. You know yeah. one that a lot of people will disagree with me. Lost. I like Lost because yes. it's short, it's sweet. It gets. I thought it was point. just. It's, it's, yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's, it's just Lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's J.J. Abrams playing three keys on a keyboard as the like logo comes out. You know, because yeah. sometimes you just want to get into the yeah. show. It's like Breaking yeah. Bad. There's that opening but with yeah. the. I mean, I do miss some of those '90s sitcoms mm -hmm, sure. theme songs sang by the same guy, like Step by Step, Full House. They oh. were the same guy. Oh, DuckTales. Duck Woo! Yes. Hell yeah. Well, also, also, didn't I mean, Alan Thicke write all, all yes. those 90s like, yeah. sitcoms? He did. The oh, best. man. Like the Growing Pains one. But I also, you got to go back to, and it is, I think, 90 seconds long, the 90210 opening where everyone like Dun -dun -dun -dun. turns to the camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, back in the day, like uh, opening sequences used to be like four minutes long. Yeah, yeah like, full... I miss that. I like. I really miss that too. California Dreams, uh, the kind of like an imitation Saved by the Bell. Oh, that yeah. was a great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Even great. China great. Beach. China Beach had a great. Opening. All right, that's where we ended. All right, yeah. <laughs> Sasha. What was that? Yes. On? What is that? I never heard of that. Oh, that it it's was... uh, after vinyl. Uh, if you. No. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get my own vinyl after show. <laughs> vinyl also has the longest credit sequence and it's every time I'm like good. shut up just hurry up oh, I hate you. all right that was Final. Twitter questions thank you guys for sending them in <laughs> hashtag them again Collider TV talk let us know what you think we love hearing from you guys so thank you thank you thank you uh, we're going to end with our pick of the week Sasha Pearl Raver yes give it to us pick of the week okay I've said this many times I'm going to say it again if you have not watched Flesh and Bone on Stars, you are missing out on one of the best shows of last year I got Makuga into it Loved Makuga it. can tell you Loved it's it. legit basically imagine the most twisted version of Black, Black Swan yes. but more rooted in reality it's about this very broken very uh, emotionally distressed from Pittsburgh ballerina from Pittsburgh who comes to New York and about what happens when she dives into this ballet company about her family life about what created the inner turmoil that you see her battling with it is so fascinating there's tons of boobs Eight. boobs uh, boobs boobs, 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 boobs. Right. lots of boobs oh, I've seen it. sex scenes oh. <clears throat> it's dark it is so messed up and that is a show where every single time because you can binge that show yeah. and I did in two days it would get to the end of the episode and you were like they did, they did, they did, they did. Yeah. Oh, next one. If, if my crazy. niece, if my nieces want to dance, I'm no, I don't care if they're the ugly girl playing softball. They are not being dancers. There's also Russian mobsters in this show. There's also strippers in this show. It has a, one of the greatest opening credit sequences. It's Karen O from the AAS doing a, a redo of Obsession from mm -hmm. the 80s. Oh, yeah. It's a great title sequence. And it was Super created dark. by uh, one of the only female writers on Breaking mm -hmm. Bad, Moira Wally Beckett. And one of my great 
great sorrows is I saw her at a, an award show and I never go up to people and I ran up and I was like I love you I love you so much please tell me that this wasn't just a limited series please tell me there will be more episodes and she was like oh, I'm so sorry there won't which breaks my heart the yeah. show is fascinating it is must see you will do it I guarantee in two days it's on stars it's on stars okay. and all, all real stars. dancers too yeah. all real dancers yeah. All, yeah they're not actors they're no. dancers Whew, makes me want to go back and watch Flesh and so Bone. Good. I'm not going to lie. Before, Guys, thank before you. Before we get like 400 you know, comments in the YouTube, it said Sinead makes her pick. <laughs> we are aware that Sasha made the pick. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sinead Sorry. was supposed to make a pick. Uh, she didn't want to do it because... <gasps> That's not what happened. Uh, she was scared, that part she's out. scared of making picks. Is that what it is? Yeah, right? man. It's a lot of pressure. You guys are real smart, so I don't know. <laughs> Which season of Friends would you have us all watch? Just tell us now. Ooh, yeah. um, season... Six. Season six of Friends. There Season we go. Six Sinead's pick, guys. She got it in. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to Collider TV Talk. Again, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. We appreciate all of the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, youtube.com slash Collider Videos. Uh, follow us. Guys, where can everybody find you? Dennis, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Sasha Pearl Raver. I'm at Sasha Pearl Raver on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and stuff. David Griffin. on Twitter at Griffin DE. Tweet me, people, if you want to talk about vinyl, because these <laughs> haters they got nothing to say about it. But I do every week. F come find me on Twitter, <laughs> Sinead DeFries. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Sinead DeFries and at that's Sinead.com. Oh, that's so Sinead.com. And you guys, you can find me at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube.com slash the Josh McCuga show. And if you guys want to send me a vinyl, I will break it on air over David's beard. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Can't touch this beard, son. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. As always, put down the book and pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.